It's in its life, but I don't see it on my phone live. Yeah. But it's in its life. It's in its life. So we'll go. Okay. Ready? Yes. All right. It says here, but not on here. It is now 7.16 p.m. And we will reconvene into open session and take action if necessary. And let the record reflect that no action was taken in uh, closed session, in executive session. Item one, discussion, consideration, and action on evaluation of Corporal Alejandro Del Real. Yeah. One motion on the table. Yeah. I have, a, I have a motion made by Councilman Luis Alfaro, seconded by Ms. Soledad, Councilwoman Soledad Flores, to approve or move forward with the recommendation of HR and Town Council. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Five to zero. Moving on to departmental reports, streets. Um, we did get an update from MPO, uh, ladies and gentlemen. They are going to be starting construction on FM 1905, which is Franklin to Antonio, uh, August of 2021. Uh, so we'll be looking out for road closures uh, moving forward. Uh, I still have to hear back on whether they're going to do one lane at a time or they're going to knock the whole street out. Uh, also in the streets, we've been getting a lot of rain. Uh, Ever and these guys have been getting all the debris. We had a lot of knocked over trees and stuff that they're dealing with, a lot of the canopy shades that were destroyed from the park area. Um, so they're going to look at addressing those issues. And then I'm pretty sure pretty soon coming up after we get to finish up with the range, we might take the street sweeper out and just run a little roller, clean up a bit. Um, other than that, Mr. Hutch, do you have anything to add? We met with a builder in Lake for the new uh, project, sir. And uh, we noticed a uh, People that are encroaching on the house right away said they were being cracked up with that with Oma, said they're going to be sent out. Yeah. Property owners, so buy them, move back. <coughs> and as you guys know, we did that survey uh, because we are looking to include sidewalk throughout the entire project as well uh, that we are including. Uh, we did identify several residents that were encroaching, so we are sending notifications to uh, uh, move back or remove their encroachment, just like we did with the other residents that were encroaching on the section that we did from Kelvin to my uh, sixth. Um, so we're following the same protocol. Uh, other than that, we're going to notify the residents and then they'll be given uh, the necessary time to uh, move their encroachments. I um, recommend that you reach out to Gabriel at Grace El Paso. I'll tell him about the different project because that could affect. And Fort Street on the next site. Yeah, mm -hmm. generally runs the Fort. Uh, any other, anything else there? That's about it, sir. All right, moving on to Parks and Recreation, Mr. Hakas. Um, just looking into, sir. Uh, after the storm that we had hit last night, we knocked up some trees and branches out of the trees, and uh, we lost some canopies as well. You know, playground and the one on uh, the skate park. Just throw them up. I don't know All right, moving on to Police and Fire. We've been super, super busy. Officers have been out there diligently working. 
Um, when and while it's kicking our butts, uh, especially with the traffic, with this weather related stuff. I mean, the officers have been out there assisting even the sheriff's office uh, nonstop, nonstop. We've had, we did have a fatality last week on I-10, which caused the freeway to be closed from Anthony all the way to Vinton. Uh, it was, it started, I think, in Anthony and rolled over into the sheriff's office jurisdiction. So the sheriff's office took primary on that, uh, that incident. Um, yesterday we had an unintended death at the Love's truck stop, so the officers were also out there. Yesterday they spent hours in here because we flooded in our building. Um, we were able to, I think, identify where the leaks were coming from, at least, we hope. Um, so hopefully Norma was able to contact the roofer. They'll be out here on Thursday to try to evaluate the roof to see if they can help us out in any way, shape, or form. Um, officers are overworked. We are shorthanded. Um, we did lose uh, Officer Varela. He had was fresh out of uh, field training. He resigned, went to another agency. Uh, six months in, then another officer that just finished his FTO program has already submitted his two weeks notice. This is his last week, uh, so we are shorthanded. Uh, <clears throat> we did do a physical agility test, and then tomorrow we're doing uh, interviews. So we do have interviews scheduled to see. Um, again, even the, with the contracts being signed, they, they're just paying back the money on the contracts. So. How many openings are we gonna have? We have uh, three and a task force opening. So a total of four. So currently our manning table is at what? With active officers here? Right now, how many officers do we have? Ten. Right now we have 10. So uh, the officers are working overtime. They're volunteering to help out other officers uh, because they don't want to see them just be the, out there by themselves, especially with all this weather related stuff that's happening. But like I said, they're, they're trying to be out there as much as, as much as we can. That's why we haven't um, put out the bikes this year because typically we always have two guys and then one on patrol. So we How haven't- How many candidates do you have to give you? Two. <laughs> no reserves, right? Nothing. We had one office, one individual reach out to us that he wanted to be a reserve officer. However, when we called him back and told him we have a PT test, he said, "Never mind, I want to do it." So, uh, but again, that goes to show that you know we have to make sure that they're out there trying to keep up with these guys and and, and help them out. Um, yes, Mary, we're on Fifth Ave. <laughs> uh, so. so but like I said, we, we are down all those those officers, but it hasn't stopped the officers from working. And um, I know here recently we're going to lose a contract, which I hope she comes back. She says she doesn't want to leave, but anyways, I had to throw it out there before my time is up. But other than that, man, that's all I got. Somebody from my area has some new people here with the citation. Weed? Yeah, there's some weeds. Oh, weeds. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, man, right now we have weeds everywhere. <laughs> I think you made weed. I say, hey, we're not even Mexican. <laughs> oh, that's one thing, right? Thank you for reminding me of weed. <laughs> so, New Mexico did legalize marijuana recreational use of marijuana. Um, we're preparing ourselves. Our drug test kits are through the roof, to be honest with you, price-wise. So we just bought 10 drug test kits at a cost of 400 bucks. So, and then now we're looking for, we're looking for money or to get with the DEA to help us to burn all the marijuana we have, because we have a lot of marijuana we need to burn. Which maybe I'm gonna open up a store in New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not gonna have any dispensary. Right. <laughs> but yeah, we have to work the plan. <laughs> well, I'm taking applications and then I'm like, we have a bonfire. But other than that, I mean, like I said, these officers are out there killing themselves, but I just want, want them home safe. We, we are trying to work on a, a scheduling program called, uh, I don't know, it's in my mind, I think it's like a pit man or something like that schedule. It'll allow these officers to be here more. However, 
and be off with her family at the same time. But the downside of that is that I spoke with one of the sergeants from the sheriff's office that run the same program. The downside is, he says, just be prepared for fleets, be prepared for officers being tired. It goes towards the end of their, of their four days. But in order for coverage wise, it'll reduce us from three shifts to two shifts with overnapping shifts. But again, it's putting a little bit more strain, but hopefully at the same time, they'll allow us some relief, time at least. Chief, in case of a, we run into problems with uh, staffing, is uh, the sheriff willing to help us out? The sheriff is willing to help us out as much as they can. Exactly. Um, they only have a couple of officers up here in the Upper Valley. So we're actually helping them out right now because they're, they're in the same boat as we are. They're losing people left and right. Losing people to the to the feds, I mean, everywhere, everywhere, yeah. So we have an officer actually right now through the pro going through the process of border patrol, and it looks fairly good for him too. So, and one last thing, we have Detective Shoraz that just submitted his retirement paperwork at the end of the year. Sure. So, December thirty first. December thirty first. He's he's saying that that's when he's going to retire. So those are big shoes to fill. Big pictures. Yeah. You know who we need to call? Ghostbusters. The Dalton. <laughs> Roadhouse, bro. The <laughs> Dalton <from> Roadhouse. <laughs> Cindy's like. <laughs> <laughs> Dalton. All right. Uh, <laughs> moving up to water and sewer. Water and sewer. We did. They said lobster. In the middle. On the line in, we're getting ready to uh, test the line and add it in the next week, bring it on service. After we disinfect it, take some backy samples. Let's see one of our wells, and go with you. One of our wells actually went out. One of the bearings, I got a Mr. Chavez from Chavez Drilling. Yeah, he gave me a nice coordinate, so he's going to work at it tomorrow. But we're going to be uh, four days with only one well, so please try not to water too much. Yeah. And then also, what was the cost that we were looking at for the repair of the well? About four hundred to fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. We're expecting a lot more, yeah. but you know. And then what about the um, the wastewater treatment plant? How much? That one. That one. Wastewater treatment plant that's going to come up to forty eight thousand, sir. And that one, sir, it's we're still waiting on the bearings, so we're busy every day just to keep them going. Because we can't turn them off because we be involved with the TCQ. <clears throat> so once we get the bearings, we're going to take one or one at a time apart so they can take it to the machine shop and get those very, uh, bearings married to the shaft. So because we can we need oxygen on the bridges. So let's do it. We don't know. I, I, I spoke with a, with, a, with a gentleman that's going to be cubic water with many. He hasn't tried the bearings and they're coming next week. All right. Uh, moving on to courts, bottom left, Castillo. So for Chief. courts, oh, Chief, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I'm mad. I'm mad because her shoe was in the um, So for the month of, I believe it was for June, the court collected twenty six thousand uh, one fifty eight. We have an ad hoc warrants officer. Um, Mr. Munoz, Officer Munoz, stepped up and. <laughs> We got a fresh batch of warrants issued by the judge, and arbitrarily, I just issued them out to all the officers, and Mr. Munoz, Officer Munoz, sorry, came back and said, hey, I like doing this. So him himself, he brought in a little over $5,700 in warrants in the last uh, week and a half. So he, he's out there, he, he's really enjoying it, but of course I told him, hey, sometimes he's gonna have to take a back seat, especially because we're gonna have to, you have to help out a lot of patrol, so. But other than that, we have court hearings set for every uh, Wednesday in July, starting the 14th, all the way down through the, uh, the 20th. Yeah, so the 14th and the 21st, and then again in August, every Wednesday. Um, we're doing both virtual and in person. So if anybody wants to see us virtual, you guys can go on YouTube. The municipal court has a YouTube page, and uh, it's live, it's streamed by via Zoom. When we do virtual. How's everything going overall since we transitioned the courts to you? I want to say it's going good. It's a transition because I have a learning curve, to be honest with you. Um, 
there's some stuff that I have to pick up on as far as dailies and uh, the payments that are get are that are made to the comptroller's office, etc. But again, um, Norma's the one that is instrumental in doing that because she, I don't know how to do all that. She still submits the payments to the comptroller's office, etc. With all this, the court fees. So uh, that I'm still I'm still trying to learn. But I think overall, I'm still. Oh, great. Oh, great. It's a new transition, so we are, you know, the, uh, the officers, I mean, everything's close to Sure. Um, for finance, how's everything going with our new bookkeeper? For finance, Ms. Uh, James, Robin James, has been fixing all the books, making sure to start the audit. Tomorrow we have a meeting with the auditors. She's been doing great. She's been found in a lot of discrepancies, but she's been fixing them. Um, Awesome. So, um, usually the second meeting in July we have our third quarter meeting. So, um, I don't know if you thought about that, but also we have to have our uh, budget. We got, you know, August and August. So, when are we going to start meeting for that? With the way Robin was uh, getting stuff started, like on the audit, because those get real, you got lengthy lists, huh? Yes. Um, to get caught up, what we want to do is just get her squared away here in the office. Once she's getting started with the audit stuff, I think we'll be able to set up some budget uh, meetings um, to start going over budget because I think uh, we'll get a better look at where the numbers are actually at once she's been given uh, the, the fair amount of time to uh, make the necessary corrections to the budget so we can see exactly where, where we're at for this year. Um, but overall, I think uh, moving into next year's budget, considering the turnover and the things, you know, the additional uh, costs that we've seen this year, um, I think, you know, taking a, 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 a conservative approach like what we did last year is probably going to be key. Uh, but we'll get those meetings underway uh, coming up. I think, what do you think, another week or so, Norma, another two weeks? I would say two weeks, but I'll definitely let her know how the report is for the quarterly budget. Maybe it will be ready for next council meeting. Yeah, I'll probably send it to you guys sooner. Okay, you can look at it. So you can review it, Sean. Okay, cool. Uh, under administration, uh, just, you know, there's a lot going on. Uh, definitely want to give a shout out to uh, Chief uh, Enriquez, all the police uh, department. Uh, Ever with the water department, Norma with our administrative uh, department here in town. Um, these guys are multitasking and handling a million things at once. So you know, I know you know we continue to drop little things on their table, but I want to say this: they are doing an, uh, an outstanding job. So we definitely want to recognize everybody uh, for all their hard work and effort, uh, and also want to thank council for continuing. You know. Uh, move forward with the necessary uh, motions on certain agenda items uh, that are moving and getting things done here in the town. So, you know, let's continue working together um, and we'll keep going from there, guys. The next regular council meeting is scheduled at 6.30 p.m. on Monday, July 26, 2021. Okay, so, I have a motion by Mr. Weeks, but I have a second. Okay. Seconded by Councilman Alfaro, all in favor? Aye. The meeting is adjourned at 7.34 p.m. Thank you very much.